let me just tell you there are more pros than there are cons with the Galaxy A52 5G. I just could not think of that many cons for this device. How's it going everybody? Welcome to another episode of Sick ETV and today we are doing a pros and cons of the new Samsung Galaxy A52 5G from Samsung. This device came out uh, less than a month ago and it is on T-Mobile. You could pick this up for about $500 and there are definitely more pros than there are cons. Of this device I could not really find too many cons other than the obvious so we're gonna go over the pros first and then go on into the cons but before we do go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, click that bell icon that way you get notified on my future videos I really really appreciate it so this is the Samsung Galaxy a52 really really nice device price wise $500 uh, it could be a little cheaper, but I think $500 is okay for this device. So going on over to the pros. So we're going to start off with number one, which is this display. This display is really, really nice. I'm very pleased with it. 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display, 1080 by 2400, and you have a PPI of 407. 120 hertz refresh rate which is just absolutely great for a device like this you have your motion smoothness you could either go high or you could go standard for this uh, obviously keep it on 120 hertz really really nice colors you can control everything on here as well really really excellent display i am very pleased with it it is the new uh infinity o display by a little hole punch cutout up there but this thing is really, really nice. Colors are nice and poppy. It is an AMOLED, so the blacks are really, really nice and deep. Great colors and everything. Viewing angles, it is flat, so you do not have that uh, curved display. Bezels are, they're not too bad. They're pretty chunky. The bottom bezel is a little bit bigger. Actually, the bottom bezel and the top bezel are actually almost the same size, but really, really nice display. It does not get that bright. I believe the brightness is only 800 nits, but I think that'll do just fine. Excellent display. The high refresh rate is nice on here too. Uh, we'll get into that a little later. But yeah, really, really excellent display. You will not be disappointed with that. Another thing that's great and another pro is this, or are the stereo speakers on here. You do get a dual uh, speaker setup, one up here at the earpiece and then one down here at the bottom. And I have to say that they do sound really, really good. Coming from last year, the A51 did not have stereo speakers. And this year, it does have stereo speakers. So that's really, really cool that they included that. Same as most of their flagships, they are stepping it up with the Galaxy A52 as far as specs go. So that is really, really nice. As far as the price, uh, I believe, uh, I'm not sure how much more expensive it was from last year, but really, really nice that they included their stereo speakers. And you do have the option for Dolby Atmos on here as well. That way you get more of a nicer sound experience when you're playing movies or listening to music and voice and things like that. So really, really nice. Love Dolby Atmos. Your equalizer, you can adjust that as well on here. And you do also have that adapt sound on here to uh, boost the sound, you know, to boost the high and the mids or just boost all the frequency. Usually I like to keep it on the 30 to 60 and uh, really get really nice sounds on that. But yeah, stereo speakers on your sound, great. So another pro on this is going to be the cameras. Now this thing has a pretty 
you know nice setup when it comes down to cameras they are pretty good you know i was expecting a, a little less but you know what these cameras are actually pretty good for this device um on the uh, rear you do get a 64 megapixel main sensor a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro and a 5 depth sensor your front facing camera is going to be a 32 megapixel front facing camera which you can see right there but yeah the uh, pictures coming out of here are really really good i am definitely impressed with the cameras on here considering the price point you can record 4k 30 on the on the uh, rear and on the front which is really really cool you do get single take fun mode uh you get portrait you get macro your night your pro video which is a definitely you know really really huge plus for this to have that pro video and then you also have your more section with ar doodle pro panorama etc and you will be seeing some pictures flash on your screen uh, taken with this so really really nice cameras they do really really good considering the price point they're not the best or anything but you know for five hundred dollars and this being a mid-range phone they are pretty good cameras i think uh you know for social media and everything like that they would do just fine going on over to the next pro is going to be the software you do get the same software that you would get on any other samsung device as far as uh, you know the software goes you do get android 11 and you do get android one ui 3.0 which is really really cool that you get that on here as you can see android 11 3.1 actually not 3.0 my bad so it is exactly the same as you would get on a samsung galaxy s21 and even on the home screen you do have the option to have that Google feed over here on the left hand side, which is really, really cool. You can't even get that on the Note 20 right now. So software on here, typical Samsung stuff. You know, I personally, I like Samsung software. You know, you either love it or you hate it, but I really do like it that it is the same on pretty much all of their devices, sort of like Apple does it. Another pro is going to be the micro SD card support, which is up here. You do get your sim tray with a micro sd card expansion so you can expand 128 gigabytes of, of storage in here uh, even more by using that micro sd card and i definitely love having that i store all of my music on a micro sd card and then i just slap them in the phone and nowadays even the s21s aren't coming with micro sd card support so that is definitely a bummer and uh, I definitely like having that extra storage that you could add on to a device, which is really, really cool. 128 gigabytes is still plenty for most people, but just so you know, you can add more with that SD card support. Uh, going on over to another pro is going to be the 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Battery life on here is actually pretty good. You can get through a full day on here charging with the uh, included charger in the box uh it only comes with like i think it's a 15 or 18 watt charger in the box which is sad but i think this phone does support 25 watt charging battery life still is really really good charging may not be the fastest but it's still pretty good probably average as far as charging speeds go but battery life on here is definitely really good and it will get you through a whole day and probably more depending on your usage. Everybody is different. My usage may vary from yours. I do not play games. Uh, I watch videos, I stream music, etc. And uh, you know, I watch YouTube and things like that. So like I said, everybody's usage will differ. Next on the pros is going to be IP67 water and dust resistance on here. So not quite IP68. But still, you can splash this and uh, get it wet for, I believe it's like 30 minutes in a meter of water or something like that. It's not, you know, you can't go swimming with this or anything or take it into the pool or anything. But you can get this wet if you're caught out in the rain. Don't worry, you will be fine. This thing, it has water and dust resistance. So really, really nice. The Samsung is including that on their mid-range smartphones. So going on over to the cons, I don't have very many cons, but the cons I do have 
are pretty significant. Uh, are they deal breakers? Probably not. But they are the cons that I do have. Like I said, it was kind of hard finding cons for this device. So first con is going to be the build quality. Now this thing is a plastic phone and it does feel cheap as far as the back is concerned. Like this plastic is very, very thin. It almost feels like, I don't know, like a piece of like plastic that you will find like on a Coke bottle or something. It's very, very thin plastic on the back. It does pick up, you know, fingerprint smudges a lot on the back. So it does not have that smooth matte texture that you would get like on a S21 or a frosted glass finish. It is sort of a uh, painted, if you want to say that. It sort of looks painted to me as far as the uh, plastic on the back is. It does pick up fingerprints and it does feel hollow and cheap. The sides are made out of plastic as well, but they actually do feel uh, nice and premium on the sides. So it does feel nice in the hands. Uh, it does have a little bit of a curve, but not really on the back. So it's not as comfortable as say, you know, a OnePlus 9 Pro or anything like that, but it's still a very comfortable phone. Uh, like I said, it feels like a $200 phone, but it costs twice as much. This thing is $500 and it definitely looks better than it feels, but you slap a case on here, you will be all right and you won't even notice that the back is plastic. You know, anyways, most people use cases on their phones. Anyways, I'm just going to give it a little wipe because this thing does get dirty quickly. Another thing of the cons is going to be performance on here. Now I noticed that uh, performance can be a little iffy as far as, you know, scrolling through the menu and opening up apps. Uh, it can be, you know, a little bit of a delay when you're doing stuff. Sometimes when I unlock the phone, I find myself clicking on something and I click on it again because it did not open when reality it is opening and it's just going really, really slow. But it's not that bad, but it is noticeable. This device has six gigabytes of RAM, so it should be okay, but I think it's mainly the processor. They're using the Snapdragon 750 and uh, the processor isn't the power, you know, most powerful processor in the world, but it does get the job done as far as everyday tasks. It's just, you know, every now and then I do find myself having a little bit of a stutter. And even though it does have 120 Hertz refresh rate, sometimes it doesn't feel like it just because you have that little stutter and lag when using this, but performance is okay. It's not the best. Uh, if you're looking to get this, you know, for gaming, I'm sure it'll do just fine. But it ain't gonna be, you know, a you know huge powerhouse in the in the uh, performance department with the Galaxy A52 uh, 5G. You might want to try getting the uh, A72, which is the phone I wanted to get, but T-Mobile did not have that one. Uh, the fingerprint sensor is going to be another con. Uh, it does have an in-display fingerprint sensor. It is optical. Uh, most of the time it works, but then sometimes it just won't read it and sometimes it's very, very slow. Good thing about this is that you do get face unlock, which is really, really cool. You can unlock this by using your face. I should have thrown that in the pros, but um, the fingerprint sensor is okay. It's not the fastest. You sort of got to set your finger on there for quite some time, but it's not, you know, slow. I have seen slower fingerprint sensors on other devices this one will definitely get the job done as far as unlocking your device it's just sometimes i've had a couple of misses and it is a little slower than say you know one plus nine pro or a galaxy s21 plus you know considering that those are you know ultrasonic and this one is optical the nine pro is an optical fingerprint sensor and that's definitely a lot faster than this one another con which is the last con not big you know, a really big con or anything or a deal breaker that you do not get wireless charging on this series. I don't think you get it on the A72 as well, but you do not get wireless charging on the Galaxy A52 5G, which would, would have been nice if they included it on there. That would have been really nice to include that on their A series phones. But uh, that, like I said earlier, it's not a deal breaker. You, you know, the wire charging is fine. You do get a charger in the box, so that's cool compared to most phones nowadays that don't even include chargers in the box. So wireless charging on here 
uh, not having it on there is not a deal breaker. I just wanted to throw it out there that you do not get wireless charging on the Galaxy A52. So uh, with that being said, those are my pros and cons. Like I said, I did not have too many cons about this device. It is a really nice device for $500. Uh, other than the build quality, I am definitely liking it. The cameras on here are really good. Uh, the display is absolutely amazing. I love this display. Uh, considering that this is a $500 phone, it looks nice and no complaints there. Viewing angles are really, really good on here. Micro SD card support. Uh, headphone jack, which is really nice. I did not throw that in there as well. Uh, you do get a charger in the box. Stereo speakers. You know, you can't go wrong with this. A large battery that will get you throughout the day. IP67 water and dust resistance. Uh, like I said, the only cons is the little bit of a lag in performance and that build quality. I wish they would have uh, included a little bit more of a premium plastic on the back rather than just a thin piece of plastic that uh, sort of looks like it's painted. Um, I like the design of the new cameras, but as far as the feel of it, it's very, very cheap feeling on this device on the back. But with that being said, guys, hope you enjoy my pros and cons of the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And stay safe out there, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.